Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we will continue building a project with Tailwind CSS. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. Welcome back to the Acme Rockets website project. We're building this website for Acme Rockets to help us learn Tailwind CSS class names, as well as how Tailwind handles breakpoints for media queries and light and dark modes. I'll quickly review the page again as we will continue to build it today. We have a hero section here where it says we boldly go where no rocket has gone before, and we completed this in the first lesson for this project. We also completed the R Rockets section that has cards for each rocket that Acme Rockets sells. Today we'll work on the testimonial section, as we see here, and we'll also work on the contact us form and complete the footer for the web page. Now we're currently looking at this in a full screen mode. I'm going to drag this over. I'm also using dark mode, which is my default. But now here on the right side of the screen, you can see I can right click in Windows on my desktop and choose personalize. I'll go to the colors. I'm going to switch dark temporarily to a light theme. And then I'll minimize this so we can look at this project once again. And you can see it also has a light theme applied with Tailwind. And that's the default unless Tailwind identifies the system preference or just the user preference, wherever it may be set, is dark mode. Now, here we have a smaller screen size, and you can see the media queries handle everything just a little bit differently. It's not taking up the full viewport for each section like I did when we were on the full page. When I drag it back over, you can see our rockets creeps up a little bit. That's okay. That's what we want. And we will handle that with media queries. But now let's look at the testimonials. They look quite a bit different than they did in dark mode. Now they have a teal background and kind of an obvious container as well. After that, when we look at the contact us, it's very much the same as well as the footer. Now, I'm not going to be in light mode that often because I really do prefer that dark mode. So I'm going to switch this back. I'll choose personalize once again, go to colors, and then choose dark. Now, if you're using Mac or Linux, that setting may be in a different place. Now I'm going to pull this back over to full screen and let's go to Visual Studio Code. Okay, I'm in Visual Studio Code now and I've got the package JSON file open. Now one change we want to make is we are using the completed code from lesson two where we started the project. Let's switch the name in our package JSON now to lesson three so we know we're updating our code. We can save that, but afterwards we just need to press control in the back tick or you could go to the terminal menu, either way, and we want to open a terminal window. Once you do that, we want to run our Tailwind command that will tell Tailwind once again to start looking at our HTML and generate that CSS file for us. So I just need to type npm run Tailwind. And it is important that you go back to the beginning of these lessons to learn how to do this. I'm not going to go back over this today, but if you try to start with this video, we're going to be jumping into things that you may not have already covered. So we covered that previously. Now it says rebuilding, and that means it rebuilt that style.css we have in our CSS directory here, and it's building it by looking at our index.html and the class names that we're using inside of it, and then generating that file that we need for our CSS. So I'm going to close the terminal. Tailwind will continue to run and look at our HTML. Now that I'm in the HTML, I'm going to go ahead and press Alt-Z, so any line that would scroll off the screen is going to go ahead and wrap down to a next line, and we're going to start working on this testimonial section where we left off in the last tutorial. So we have the header already for testimonials. After that, we want to add a figure element, and we're going to add a class to that of MY, which would be the margin on the Y axis, so the top and bottom, and we'll say dash 12. So when I press tab, we now have our figure opening and closing, and we can mouse over, just hover over that my dash 12 class name, and you can see the actual CSS style. So we have margin top three rem and margin bottom three rem. After that, we're going to have a block quote element, and I shouldn't have pressed the tab so soon, so I'm going to redo that. We'll do block quote, and then dot, and here I'm going to add some classes too. So bg dash teal dash 600, that is the background color, and that is a specific color that you can look up in the Tailwind docs if you want to. After that, I'm also going to add, for dark mode, bg black, 
And then I'm going to add a padding on the left, so PL-14, and then a padding on the right, PR-8, not 98, just 8, and then a PY, so this would be padding on the top and the bottom, on the Y-axis, of dash 12, and then rounded dash 3XL, and then a dash relative. So we're going to position this block quote element relative. Now I'll press tab and it adds all of those classes to the block quote element. But I do see one mistake. I must have typed a dash instead of a period because we do not want a dash between rounded dash 3XL and relative. Now that looks correct. Now I'm going to put a paragraph inside of the block quote here. So just a P tag and then I'm going to put dot and start typing out the class name as well. So text dash 2XL and then we're going to have a media query when it gets to that small size, and we'll have text-3XL. After that, we'll also say text left, which should align it to the left, margin top-2, and we'll have text-white. And then if we have dark mode, we'll have dark and then text-slate-400. Now we're also going to use a pseudo element for some content, those double quotes that we see for the testimonials. Now I could press tab right now just to impact what I want for the paragraph, but we're also going to use a pseudo element for before and a pseudo element for after content and those double quotes we saw with the testimonials. So I'm going to drag this to the left just to show you a reminder. And when I go to testimonials, you see these double quotes here, and we had those in the light mode as well. Those are pseudo elements that we are inserting with CSS, the before and the after. So now let me bring this back, and we can go ahead and apply those with Tailwind too. So after we've added these initial classes, I'm going to add some for the before pseudo element. So I'll have dot before, and then after the before, I want a colon and content, and then I'm going to have a dash and a bracket. And now I'm going to put in a symbol. And this is a slash 201C. And that is that double quote, the opening double quote. After that, I can put another before and colon and say font dash serif. And then another before colon absolute. So it is positioned absolute, which is why we had the parent positioned relative. And then another before colon, and we can put the top at zero. And then another before, and we can put the left at zero. And then let's put another before, and we'll size it up with a text dash nine XL, very large. We'll continue with our before streak and have text dash white. And then let's add before opacity dash 25 before transform and then once again a before translate dash x dash 2 we'll do the same for y translate dash y dash 2 so we're just moving it a little bit with that transform and i believe we're finished so let me press tab that's a lot of classes but just adding that before pseudo element added a lot now i'm going to paste in the content and feel free to go to the source code for this tutorial to copy this content if you want, or you can type it out. I didn't want to have to type out each little sentence for you as we went along. More interested in the classes we are applying. So let's save this much, and everything looks accurate to me. Now we also want to do this with the after pseudo element. So I'm going to select everything here for the before and copy this with Control C, and then add a space and paste it in once again. So now we have doubled the classes and Visual Studio Code shows us, yes, there is an error here. And it looks like it didn't add our content that we had the first time. Let's see if it added it the first time. It really didn't, did it? It didn't like being chained together. So let's put this in again. It's a bracket and then a single quote and slash 201 with a capital C, there we go. So this is our before content. Now we're going to have to change that for the after. So we know the after will start right here with content. And then I'm going to press control D to select every instance of the word before. I'm just pressing control D to select all of those. I'm going to change those to 
after. So I just changed them all at once. Now we change this content because it will not be the same. It's the closing double quotes. So once again, a bracket, and I'll have single quotes and then a slash 201, but the capital letter D. So now that would be the closing double quotes. So yes, this is a lot of classes applied to one element. First of all, we just had what we were styling the paragraph with, and that wasn't that much because the before starts right here. But once you add before and after pseudo elements, you can really fill this up. As soon as we finish with this first testimonial, we will check the display as well, just to make sure we haven't made any mistakes. But we're not quite finished yet. After the paragraph, we need to add a fig caption element, and that will have several classes too. So we'll put on italic, and then text-xl, and then for a small media, media query, we'll put text-2xl, then text-write, then margin top-2, then text-slate-500, and then for dark mode, we'll put text-slate-400. Now let's press tab, and all of those classes are applied to the fig caption, and inside of this, I'm going to put an HTML entity, so the ampersand, the hashtag, and 8212, and that is a long dash or a long hyphen. Then I'm going to attribute this first one to Wiley Coyote, and on his business card, it says genius, so that's what I'm going to put. If you're familiar with Wiley Coyote, you know what I'm talking about. And now let's check our project. So I'm going to press go live and we should start live server. And here's our project. Let's just scroll down. Here's the rockets we completed as well. Here's the testimonials. Oh, and we do have a small issue with the quotes. It looks like the before and the after are on top of each other. So there is something we need to fix here. Everything else looks okay, but we want that closing quote over here, just above the genius. So let's see what's going on in our code. And yes, here's the problem. We changed the symbol, but that's all we changed. And then we gave both position of top zero, but this bottom one shouldn't be at top zero. It should be at bottom. So let's go ahead and add that. And it's a minus bottom. So we'll say minus bottom dash 20. And then instead of left zero, it's going to be on the right side. So it is right zero. After that, everything should stay the same. So I'll just drag the code to the left here. And now we can see we've got our quote up here above the starting of the paragraph. And then we've got the quote here below genius, but I think we wanted it above. So let me check that one more time. So if we scroll down, we can see we put our fig caption inside of the block quote, and that was a mistake as well. So I used control X after I highlighted that to remove it. And then I put the fig caption after the closing block quote. And now we should be good when we drag this back over. Always good to check your code. So we have the opening quote here, the closing quote here on the right, and that looks much more like what we want. So I'll drag this back. And now the hard part was creating the first one, but now we just have testimonials that follow this same pattern. So I'm going to highlight everything we just created from the opening figure to the closing figure, and I held down the shift key and clicked here on the ending line to highlight everything. Now control C to copy. Actually, I don't need to do control C. What I want to do is shift alt and the down arrow to copy it down once, and then shift alt and the down arrow to copy it down twice. So now we should have three testimonials. They're just all the same. So let's save that, and we'll once again verify that we have three here. So here's one, two, three testimonials all from Wiley Coyote. So now we just need to change that content. Let's scroll up to find out where we started and there's testimonials. And so here's the first one from Wiley Coyote. Now let's just change the content for the second one. So I'll highlight all of this and paste in the next paragraph. Now I want to notice something here, draw your attention to it. I'm using a span and I applied one class to that just for this one sentence that says, this makes me very, very angry. If you're a fan of Looney Tunes, you might know what the character is that said this. And let's attribute the quote, and it belongs to Marvin the Martian and his faithful companion, K9. And our final testimonial, I'll paste in that paragraph as well. And you might know who this is as you look at it. And once again, there is a span in here. 
and there's a couple of long hyphens as well. And we emphasize the phrase, I need it. And if we scroll down, you can see we are going to attribute this to Buzz Lightyear, as you might guess with the Infinity Rocket, if you are familiar with Buzz Lightyear. So now that we've changed all three quotes, let's drag this back to the left and let's go ahead and look at our page. And we've got Wiley Coyote here. And then we've got Marvin the Martian with his quote. And finally, we have Buzz Lightyear. Let's drag this out to a full screen and see how these look on the full screen as well. And of course, if this isn't to your liking, you can adjust these as well. And it looks good in dark mode. Let's make sure our light mode is what we expect as well, because we have a few classes that could be applied differently there. We'll go to colors and light. And then I will go ahead and minimize this. And yes, it sure looks like that. Well, we do have this quote over here kind of in the corner and off the screen. So maybe we do need to adjust that one quote symbol that we have here in the bottom right. So let's go ahead and pull this back to the right and pull our code over and see what we can change. Once again, when we adjusted for the translate on the after, we didn't think about it being exactly the opposite. So that is what we need to change. I'm going to highlight the after translate X2 and after translate Y2. We need those to actually be minuses, but I'm also going to press Control D once and twice to select all three instances of this. So now we just have to change it once and it will be changed in all three spots. We want to put a minus before the word translate and that will make all of the difference. Let's go ahead and do that once again for the Y. And then once we save, now that is the opposite of translate X2. It's actually a minus X2 here. So I'll pull this back over to the left and we can see now the quote is where we expect it to be, this closing quote in the bottom right for all of our containers that hold these quotes in light mode. And I think it's going to look a little bit better in dark mode too. So I'll go ahead and select personalize once again, colors, choose our dark mode, and then I should be able to minimize this. And yes, this looks a little bit better in dark mode as well. I just think the positioning of that closing double quote is a little better than it was before. Okay, let's drag Visual Studio Code back to full screen. And now it is time to work on the contact us section. Before we jump down to the title, let's look at this section with the ID and the class. We have the padding set to six all the way around, the Y axis margin set to 12. But one thing, and I think we forgot to do this for the testimonials as well, is set the scroll margin as we did for the previous sections and we'll set this to 16 because it's the last one but I believe we want to set this to 20 for the other sections and we had already done that for the previous two sections the hero and the rocket so let's go ahead here and add a scroll dash margin top dash 20 as well and now let's go back down and go below our contact us header. And here we want to start a form. So we'll have a form, form will have an action, and we're not really going to fill in that action. You could send this information to wherever you want to. I believe in my HTML course, we went ahead and sent this to a backend server that would at least repeat that information to us. But the action's not what's important. We're talking about design here with Tailwind. So we'll just leave the action blank and let's go ahead and add some classes. And I'll go ahead and put a class quote. Now inside the quote, I'm going to have max-w-4xl and then MX, which is margin on the X axis to auto. So it will center the form Then text dash two XL small media query. We'll switch to text dash three XL, and then we'll make this form a flex box and it will be using columns. We'll set the items to left and a gap dash four. Now we'll only have a subject and a message here. So we'll start with the label for the subject. So we'll say subject, and then likely for the subject, we'll put what we can view here, subject and a colon. And now let's go ahead and put the input and let's make it a type text. And that's what we get by default, but we have some other attributes to add as well. So let's say the ID needs to equal the four. So that is subject. Then we'll have a name and that is also equal to subject. And then let's make this a required input. They should both be required. And then a min length equal to three and a max length 
equal to 60 for the subject line. We could also add a placeholder, and this would be equal to your subject. And now we'll start with the class names. So here we'll just say class equals, we've got our double quotes. So w dash full. So that just gives it a full width of 100%. Text dash black, text dash 2XL. Small media query switches it to text dash 3XL. Padding dash 3, rounded dash XL. Then we set a border, and then we say the border is solid. Then we say the border color will be border dash slate dash 900. And then if we're in dark mode, we will have border set to none. And from there, I think we could save this. I want to just put a slash at the end of the input so it doesn't have a closing input element, or I should say closing tag. Either way, now we have a label and an input. Now let's go ahead and add a label. And this is going to be for the message. So we'll say, whoops, we need the label. Once again, I can press tab and now I get the four. Here we'll say for message. Likewise, we'll make this visible message with a colon. Now I'm going to scroll up for some extra room here. This will be a text area. And here we already get some attributes to add in. So this will be a message and the ID needs to match the four for the label. So that will also be message for columns. It says, 30 and 10 by default, that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and add a placeholder as well. So we'll have placeholder equals your message. And let's make this required too. And now we're ready to add the class names. And so for the first class, let's go ahead. You know, we can just copy the classes because they're identical for the input and for the text area. So we'll just have all the different class names. I did control C to copy them and we've just added them to the text area as well. Now the text area element does have a closing tag, unlike what we had for the input where I could just put the slash and the close there. Okay, after that, we need a button to submit the form. So let's have a button and let's give it a background color of teal-700. After that, let's give it a hover pseudo class. So if we hover over the button, now we'll have a background of teal-600, which is just a little lighter. And then if it has an active pseudo class, so if we are clicking on the button actively, it will be background teal-500, just a little bit lighter yet. The text on the button will be white, and let's give it a padding of dash three, and let's give it a width dash 48. After that, we'll say rounded dash XL, and then, whoops, there we go. And then we'll have a border once again, and then we can say border dash solid, and then a border dash slate dash 900. And then we can have a dark, once again, set to border none. And we can go ahead and press tab, and let's add the word submit on the button itself. Now there's a class we hadn't seen before, the width of 48. So let me mouse over that. I'll just hover and you can see that sets the width to 12 rem or 192 pixels. And now with our form complete, let's drag VS Code to the left and scroll down to the form and there we can see it. So we have the subject and we have the message. If we don't enter either, it should say it is required. It looks at that first and so now we'll put hey in the subject submit again, and it says yes, the message is still required. And remember, you can submit this to wherever you want to. If you're not familiar with the submit action of a form, please check out my HTML for Beginners course that goes over forms in one of the lessons and also talks about the action and even gives you a test server you can submit a form to. With everything looking good there, let's go ahead and scroll down and we are ready to add the footer. The footer is going to come after the main element. So let's put it below and we'll start with the footer element and we can add classes to it right away. So let's say dash BG, dash teal dash dash 700 and then text dash white and then we'll also have text dash xl and we can press tab and we get all of those classes added but i also needed to add the id and i should have done that before with the hashtag but here i'll just say id footer and we need that added as well. Okay, so we have the footer with an ID and the class. Now inside of the footer, we're going to create a section 
and this will be a container which will let us divide up some of the content. So now let's go ahead and add a max dash W dash four XL. And if you remember, we wanted that background teal to spread way across the page, the entire width, even just like we did the header. However, the content we want to contain to this max width for XL, just like we did the header as well. So it doesn't spread itself all the way out on those large 16 by nine screens. After that, we'll put in a margin uh, X on the X axis of auto. So it centers this content and we'll have padding dash four flex also have flex dash columns. So we'll use columns for this content. Small media query sets it to flex dash row. And so on a mobile, it would be different. And then the small media queries as the screen gets larger. So iPad and up, it would be a row. Then we'll have another small media query and we'll say justify dash between if that is the case on those larger screens. Now we press tab and all of those classes are added to this section. Once again, this max W4XL, if you remember, sets a max width. Here you can see it's 896 pixels or 56 rem. Now I'm going to add an address element, which is a semantic tag that tells HTML and anything processing it that the inside, the contents, is an actual address. Now I'll just paste in the address, but you can see I've got a couple of elements inside of this address. So I've got an H2 around the title, the full business name, Acme Rocket Powered Products, Inc. And then I have each line of the address and then the email actually has an href in there that contains the email. So if you click it, it would launch the email that is processed on your computer. And then also or the default client for email, I should say. And then you've got the href for the phone and on a mobile device, clicking that should actually dial that number. But this is just one of the columns. We have some more content to add. So I'll scroll up a little bit. Then we're going to add a nav element here and add some classes to that. So the first class is hidden. So it would be hidden on mobile devices, but then we'll say at a medium size, so a larger query, we'll put in a flex display and we'll have flex dash column and we'll give a gap dash two. Press tab, but we want to add one more attribute to this. It's an aria dash label because we have several nav elements on the page. So we have to say what this navigation is about. And so we'll just put footer in there as we also had a couple of nav elements up in the header. So now that we have our nav set, we need to put some hrefs in here, some links. So I'll start with the anchor tag. When I press tab, we get that href, and this is just going to link back to the rockets section. So I'll just put that hashtag rockets for the anchor. That's a link on the same page. But we can also add some classes here. So I'm going to put a class, set this equal to hover. So when we're hovering over this link, the opacity will switch to 90. So it will be just a little see-through when we hover, we can tell the difference. And we'll have our rockets as the text. So now while I'm on this line, I'm going to press shift alt and the down arrow two times. So I just copy all of that down. So the next one is going to link to the testimonial section. And once again, instead of our rockets, I will switch this to testimonials. And then on the last one, it's going to link to the contact anchor. And then I'm going to put contact us here in this link. We have one more column yet to add here. And so I'll put a div. We'll just use a div to contain this information. And then we'll add the class of flex and flex dash column, and then a small media query, and give it a gap dash two. Now inside this div, we're going to have a paragraph and I'll put the class text dash right. Now I'll press tab and now I'll say copyright. And now I'm going to use an HTML entity, the ampersand copy and semicolon is the copyright symbol. Now I'll use a span element and this will have an ID of year. And I'll go ahead and put 2022 in here, which is the year I'm making this tutorial. But typically you would grab this ID with JavaScript and put in the current year so you didn't have to update this. You would not have to update this manually every year. And that would be an ideal script to put in to any web page to update that copyright year automatically. Okay, after that, we're finished with the first paragraph. So I'll put in a second paragraph tag, 
Again, the text write class, I'll just say all writes reserved. Spell reserved, that is not right, reserved. There we go. And now we should be finished with the footer. Let's drag this over and take a look as we worked on this. Here is our footer. You can see this is all aligned to the left and in the top left corner. This is in the bottom right. And our middle column is currently hidden because that's what we had for the media query. It started out as hidden and it doesn't show till it's a larger screen. So let's drag this over. Here is now our middle column and you can see the opacity set to where they get just a little see-through when we hover over each of those links. This is our nav in the footer. And if you wanted, you could put a link to top here as well, but we already have it in the header. If we click on Acme Rockets, we go back to the top. We can go to the Rockets section, Testimonial section, and the Contact Us section as well, and then we can scroll down to the footer. And if I scroll back to the top, we can see that we're not currently giving our hero section the full viewport, even though we are in this widescreen mode. And that's something we wanna do. We can concurrently see our rockets start down here. That's great when we have a page more like an iPad, but when we have a widescreen, we want to put in a media query that will give the full viewport to the section that we're on instead of sharing that viewport between two sections. To do this, we're going to put in a custom media query. So I will drag this back over to full screen mode and we need to actually look at our source here with our input CSS. So this is what brings in everything from Tailwind when it compiles our CSS. Underneath this, we can put our own classes, but I need to put this inside of at layer and then put utilities and then include this in curly braces. And this is going to define a custom class that we can call with a media query as well. So now I'm going to say, section-min-height, and we could name this anything we want, and I need to set the min height for a section, and I'm going to do it for a specific media query. Now this min height, and I will show you how I uh, calculated this, but I need to use calc, and it's going to be 100 viewport units, except we want to account for that header that is always locked in place. It's sticky at the top, so we'll say minus 68 pixels. You might wonder how I got to 68 pixels, so let's go back and look at the header quickly and we can calculate that. So when we look at the header, here we can see that we have got an H1 with the class of text 3XL. So as I hover over this, you can see the line height is assigned along with the font size when we apply a text class. And so we've got 2.25 rem, that's 36 pixels. But then we also need to account for any padding. And notice our section has some padding here. And the padding is one rem on all sides. So we've got 16 pixels on the top and 16 pixels on the bottom for a total of 32. So 32 plus 36 is our 68. And that's why I'm subtracting 68 from the overall viewport height. But we're not quite ready to apply this class yet. We need to go ahead and define our custom media queries inside of our tailwind.config.js file. And that's going to go inside of the theme and then we have extend and it's going to go inside of there. So now we need to type screens and this will be an object, so it has curly braces as well. And I'm going to define two different media queries here. One is a wide screen, and this is going to be another curly brace, and then we say raw, and then we can give what we're looking for here as far as the media query. And it's going to have a parentheses, then it's going to be a minimum aspect ratio media query, and this is going to be three slash two is the way I want to set this. And then of course a parentheses afterwards. So the width has to be a minimum of three to two, which emphasizes that it should be wider than it is tall. After that, I need to go ahead and put a comma because as I mentioned, this is an object. If you know JavaScript, you know what I'm talking about but we're going to put another value in here. So we need to separate them with a comma. I'm also just going to do shift alt and the down arrow so I don't have to retype everything. I'm going to turn this word widescreen into tall screen. And now this is going to be a minimum aspect ratio 
of one to two. So it needs to be at least twice as tall as it is wide for this to kick in for the tall screen. So now let's save these settings and we'll go back to our HTML and we can use our widescreen and tall screen media queries along with our section min height class that we defined here. So we'll put those all to use together. So let's go to our hero section, which is right here. And then in the section, we can put these together. So I'm going to type widescreen and then a colon, just like we did with the small media query or the dark media query. And then I'm going to have that class name, which was section dash min dash height. Then I'm going to copy this, give one more space, paste it again, and I want to use that same class for a tall screen. So we also have the section taking up the full viewport if it's on a mobile device. So we've got both of these classes now, and I can just copy both of them, and we want to apply them to each section. So we have our hero section, and we'll scroll down here to our rockets section, and we can apply those at the end after our scroll margin. And then let's go ahead and scroll down to our testimonial section. And here it is. So once again, after the scroll margin. And then finally, let's get down to our contact us section. We'll find that. And here we are. And we can apply it as well after that scroll margin. Now let's drag this back over. And let's go ahead and just click on Chrome. Now we can see this takes up the full viewport. And so when we go to our rockets, we don't see any other section creeping up underneath because that media query has kicked in for the aspect ratio. Testimonials, it's already long enough. It probably wasn't an issue, but we went ahead and applied that class. Contact us, basically the same thing. It's already tall enough that it wasn't really an issue, but there we see the section anyway. Now let's go ahead and look at these in more of a mobile view. And we'll go back to the top and we'll start. We can see once again, we're taking up the full viewport for our hero section, and that's great. We don't see anything creeping up underneath it. We can scroll down to our rockets. Now it's going to be tall enough to not have an issue with that. Of course, the testimonials are tall enough, and the contact us should take up most of that page too. And there is our footer. So what we really have left to complete with this project is that mobile menu that is not currently working. And that's what we're going to finish in the next tutorial. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.